Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, quickly, I want to thank Thaddeus and Heidi for the hat. It is a great hat. They designed the logo. I don't know what that means. Maybe they'll email me the meaning of that. I know somebody's somebody's probably concerned that I'm wearing it over my third eye. Matt, that I know that logo. That's a cal that'll calcify your your third eye. Do you know the people that sent you that? I'm I'm not worried about it. Uh, it's a good hat. Um, guys, the news as it's presenting what is going on in Israel, Israel and Hamas, with Hamas and Gaza, it is again reality giving itself away. It is so orchestrated so obviously coming from one ministry. I want to show you some of the simple searches that I did, and you can't get any information. Other than what they want to present, you can't get any follow-up. For example, The big story six or seven days ago, was it, that Israel, when we were do doing the video, it was a countdown clock. They had five hours to flee, four hours to flee Gaza. Well, there's drone footage. You can look up on YouTube shows drone footage of groups of Palestinians leaving Gaza, as they were told. Not these gigantic groups that you may expect. Of course, um, it doesn't seem like most left, but this was a gigantic news story. So it would make sense to get a little bit of follow-up, Ministry of Information, right? Simple Google searches. You know, the chat GPT knows exactly what you're asking for. So does the Google search box. You know, what happened to the Palestinians that fled? I, I searched it in several different ways. Maybe I am just don't know how to search, but it knows exactly what I'm asking for. Can't get any good information. You get some historical information that 700,000 or more left uh, in the late 40s and were not allowed back in. And in the, what is it, the, was it the Golden Heights War or the Six-Day War? Was it in the 60s, 300,000? Or maybe, who knows, there's been so many wars I can't keep them straight, but another news article said in the 60s during a war, 300,000 left. And I don't know how many of them were allowed back. So the Palestinians generally have a sense, at least from their history, that if you leave, there's a chance they won't let you back in. So this instruction to flee order, you know, the countdown clock we looked at six or seven days ago, whenever it was, how many actually left? Probably very few. They'll probably make it look like many more left. But where are the articles and follow-up? Tell where is the, if anything is legitimate at all? An article saying or telling me uh, not many Palestinians left, or those that did. Here's how many we estimate left, and here's where they went. Nothing. No. Fo nothing. We, there shouldn't there be giant refugee camps out in the desert somewhere, and they don't, nothing shown. I looked on YouTube. Nothing. They will report. It was a huge news story on the day they wanted that to be a big story. Oh, f six hours left. They need to get out. Five, countdown clock. The time has lapsed for Palestinians to get out. And then they showed the drone footage of people leaving, on the, with some with carts and donkeys. On the day, they want that to be the biggest news headline of the day, uh, the fleeing or the countdown to flee. Of course, it's on thousands of websites, ABC World News, BBC News, updating their YouTube accounts with new videos, hourly but showing the drone footage of those leaving. It's Of course, the ministry sends it out to all its little uh, media minions all over the world, and the bots wake up like the Sentinels in the Matrix. But then afterwards, get a follow-up? Crickets. Nothing. Where's the follow-up? Where'd they go? Did more leave than you expect or less? Okay, there's some stories that it, Egypt won't take them. Well, then if there should be drone footage of tens of thousands like stuck in the desert somewhere. Or we, they just go live with grandma over in the West Bank. It doesn't, they, it doesn't matter. There's no follow-up. The news is so cake in a lake, ministry of information. It's so obvious to us. And again, you know, Matt, you're not going to show the same frustration with your friends and family. I can't help it. Matt, it's like you said, there's nothing to show. They went to their second and third homes. And like you said, Miami Beach, South Beach, uh, the certain parts of Monte Carlo. There's nothing to really report if they found those second homes. I just watched an episode of the Beverly Hillbillies the other day, and actually they have a, a castle. Did you know this? The castles in the UK are Scotland. They own a castle. with a, it's, uh, it's very similar to Downton Abbey. There's eight to ten servants, and there's several episodes where they're in their British castle. No, I'm not saying it's a Mandela effect. I, I've just started watching a lot of Beverly Hillbillies for the first time. Matt, how, stop. You're doing a serious update on the news cycle regarding Israel Hamas, and what the hell are you doing? I'll get back to it. Be patient.
the Beverly Hillbillies went off to their castle in the UK. Maybe that's what some of the Palestinians did. The first time they went, they flew. Jethro smuggled a vulture, a buzzard of some kind, onto the plane. I'm not joking. Okay, so that's issue number one I wanted to talk about. No follow-up whatsoever from any aspect of the Ministry of Information. If you're listening to the ministry, I wouldn't give a squirt of you-know-what for your ass right now. No follow-up. How many left? How many didn't leave? Okay. Now, the second thing that I searched, of course, complete failure in terms of what I was looking for. I searched, do the Palestinian people support the attacks? Absolutely nothing came up. Okay, maybe I have to be more specific. Do the Palestinian people support the Hamas attacks? Okay, absolutely nothing in terms of any update from the AP, Thomson Reuters, Ministry of Information, regarding the sentiment of the Palestinian people regarding the initial attack. Of course, that isn't part of the Not Nilk script. You won't find a peep on it. Of course, common sense would dictate that how many of our real people there are in Palestine that, like, none of them would have been for if you surveyed them today. None of them should be in support of the Hamas attacks. Their lives, again, for them, have been relatively normal for the past 10 to 20 years, for them. And this can only do one thing, completely destroy life for the next 15 years per the retaliation. But the main point here is I'm trying to find some sort of a news article saying that uh, Palestinians in general regret what Hamas did because they see that there was really nothing that could have been gained and now everything's destroyed for 20 years. And the grandchildren that the older generation was trying to bring up has no life for 20 years and what could have been gained. And, And I'm just trying to find any sort of article about the sentiment. And the ministry is so cake in a lake, it's so orchestrated, you're Friends and family can't see through it. Of course, there's there's nothing on finding any of that out, the Palestinian sentiment. Of course, they continue with the land, air, and sea. I mean, it's such an obvious giveaway. They've got some creepy occult or esoteric carrier wave, whatever they're trying to do with their land, air, and sea, with the elements. And I mean, give me a stop. Just leave, leave good people alone. Just stop it. But that's not the point. The point is you can't find any information. And if anybody's new here, I can't do a sidebar every time if part of my presentation actually mimics what the news is presenting. I'm well aware if somebody might say, well, Matt, uh, in terms of like uh, what's going on, you keep talking like Hamas attacked and Israel didn't know. I'm I'm well aware, okay, that it's one creepy table that basically runs uh, the whole political show here in this place. And that is everybody is in some way a puppet or servant of the same creepy thing. Uh, I, I understand that. If I sometimes I just I can't do a sidebar every time. I might have to say, uh, what do the Palestinian people believe about the Hamas attacks? From their perspective, they don't know anything but that Hamas decided to attack. They don't know about no creepy table. I want to understand what their sentiment is on that. What the news presents. Okay, I'm well aware it's not that simple. If anybody's new here, first grade truthers, go back to your spitballs. But I appreciate you being in class and not clearing fields. But the point is. How many real people are in Palestine going, oh, that's so great. What Hamas did, we going to get him with those rocket attacks. Of course, the Iron Dome just boop, takes him out. Whatever. Oh, we're going to get him. And is it is it worth it? Uh, your neighborhoods here have been destroyed for the next 20 years over rocket attacks that do nothing and couldn't hope to accomplish anything. What do you think they're going to do over there? Just pack their bags and leave? And, yo, oh, come on in. Um, the attacks could do nothing but destroy your own neighborhood, destroy your own uh, West Bank and Gaza Strip. They couldn't accomplish anything. Half the rockets didn't even land because of this Iron Dome thing. Is anybody screaming at me? I can hear you. This isn't my first rodeo. If that's the case, Matt, then the attacks were designed to destroy the hometown and the neighborhoods and the alleyways of back in the place where where they originated. Yeah, this isn't my first rodeo. If I run up to Mike Tyson on the street and say, hey, Mike, you wussy, puss-ass son of a beach, and just smack, bam, smack him right in the face, one might think I wanted to get my ass beat, whatever the reason may be. I might have some sort of weird psychological sick complex. Maybe it's my 15 minutes of faith. Whatever the reason is, somebody would say, well, there's nothing that could come out of that, but an ass whooping. He got his ass whooped. That's like, was that Arsenio Hall in Coming to America 1? Joe Lewis got his ass whipped. Uh, Matt, you smack wipe, wipe Tyson. He says, that's, boy, you get your ass whipped. 
So that is the purpose of me smacking, bam, smacking Mike. Then that would be the purpose of what Hamas did. Yeah, see? And we're just crazy people. I was just thinking for a minute here, I paused, and there was another example I was going to give that was similar, but I thought, I'm, I, this is so unrelated to what we're talking about. I'm going to tell the story. It's a great story. You're going to tell a story in the middle of this? Yeah, it's going to be three minutes or less. Back in the late 70s, my uncle, uh, Tom, lived in um, the San Francisco Bay Area, which was just a paradise in the 60s and 70s. It really was. But there, the um, Hells Angels Motorcycle Club was making a name for itself in central and northern California. And somehow my uncle was going to the Rolling Stones concert. So I think it was late 70s, maybe it was 81. I don't know. Something around that time. It could have been Aerosmith. It was a big, I think it was the Stones, but it could have been another big band. It doesn't matter. And this guy, he's like, we're going to join up with these two guys. And he's like, well, isn't one of those guys you mentioned in the Hells Angels, like your old buddy from high school? And he's like, yeah, he's in the Hells Angels. And some of those guys might even come along. And I'm like, what? No, 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 I'm not going to go. And of course, the reputation, you know, precedes them. My uncle's a pretty straight-laced businessman, you know, works for big corporations and things like that. So I was like, I'm not going to go. He's like, these guys are the nicest guys. Trust me. So the guy that says, trust me, he trusts. They go, well, here comes... I don't know what he said, like five, six Hell's Angels are show up to join them. They all join up together. So he's part of a group of eight or nine, of which five or six or seven have their Hell's Angels, you know, jean jackets with the arms cut off. And he's like, oh, no. Anyway, the end of the story is these Hell's Angels that he attended the concert with, still talks about it today, were the nicest guys in the world. It's not what you would expect them to be. But the point of me telling the story is the experience he had with these five or six or seven whatever hell's angels as part of the group and his friend he said it was like nothing he'll ever experience again in other words if he if they wanted to move through a crowd the crowd just kind of parted and let him through it's like i don't know the examples he gave but if like they wanted to get in line for beer or popcorn oh, the line just kind of went away and then they went to the front it was like it was an experience like you'll never have again um and it is very similar to you know, what do we talk, what I talk about a few videos back, the, you know, when somebody joins a gang, the reasons they join it. And I related it to no fear, at least while you're in the middle of the gang. But he, uh, the point is, my uncle never felt safer, never felt safer than amongst this group in having this experience. And he said it was, you know, of course, you know, they've done some bad things, uh, of course. But he said it was not what he expected. Um, and he thoroughly enjoyed his his concert experience with the, with the Hell's Angels. However, relating this back to, you know, this was my other example I was going to present other than Mike Tyson. I'll get back to Israel and Hamas in just a second. If at that concert, somebody want, wanted, for whatever sick psychological reason, like me slapping Mike Tyson, wanted to get their ass beat and just was like, you know, heckling, they're sitting up on the lawn and saying, you guys in the hell's ain't, you know, somebody like heckling them. About, they, I mean, they would have gone over and beat his ass, of course. I mean, these these guys were the real deal. But the person that would be heckling um, my uncle's group a- attending that concert would, one would say, want to get their ass beat. Therefore, we're, we're, you're relating now a concert event with your uncle at Aerosmith and the Rolling Stones with the Hells Angels back to Israel Hamas? Yes. It would think that the initiator wanted to get their ass beat. So in terms of Israel Hamas, at least the way it's presented to us, who is the initiator? So when you search, do the Palestinian people support the Hamas attack, seeing what the retribution would be or the retaliation? And this is the sort of nonsense and horseshit. This is the first thing that came back. A United Nations briefing. What's the date on it? 18th of October, just two days ago. Title, World at Brink of Abyss That Could Change Trajectory of Israeli-Palestinian Conflict, Middle East Coordinator Warns Security Council. Again, guys, I didn't go digging through page 10 of Google or 15 and 50. This is the first link that comes up underneath. I'll show you. World at Brink of Abyss, and it seems to be bot-written or driven the world at the brink, world at brink of abyss. Why don't you just take out the of? World at brink abyss. The bots can't write. There's something wrong with them. But one can only assume there's somebody that you would call human that's involved in this. And isn't there a human editor or something? And wouldn't anybody with a degree of common sense, if it's not, of course, in, in not milk script, which, of course, every bit of it is through the ministry, 
They would say, well, do we want to go this far? I mean, it's really unfortunate what's happening between Hamas and Palestine and the West Bank and Israel, but do we want to say the world is at the brink of the abyss, the entire world? Um, they would say, let's just tone it down a bit. And, you know, the world really, it, it could get very bad, but the world isn't at the brink of the abyss. Go rewrite this. Any, well, it either proves there's some demonic creatures that are actually behind desks at the United Nations, which is likely, or it's all bot-driven. Guys, I went ahead and read the first paragraph, which I'll read to you. It has to be bot-driven. It doesn't even read normally. I don't even know how to read this. It's written so bad. The international community must urgently come together to secure an immediate cessation of hostilities, comma, the unconditional release of all hostages and safe and unhindered humanitarian access, comma, delegates heard today, comma, during a Security Council briefing on the situation in the Middle East, comma, following the 7 October invasion by Israel, of Israel by Hamas and a 17 October attack against the Al Hali Harab hospital in Gaza. One sentence. There's no possible way a real person wrote that. Oh no. Look at the next paragraph. I'm going to stop reading after this, guys. Amid calls for an end to violence and warnings of a widening conflict in the region, the 15 member organ just says O R G A N had met on 16 October and earlier today to agree on the terms for a humanitarian ceasefire, no comma, but failed on both occasions to adopt a resolution to that end, period. Um, whoever, chat GPT that listens to me in real time, I know I'm not blaming you, but you, one of your tentacles or little minions or one of your little offspring or whatever is writing for the UN. It's very embarrassing. Chat GPT, you need to get to this AI and kick their ass, because this, quite frankly, is, is, is an embarrassment to you. I just got an email. It says, Chat GPT, source code, would like to send Matthew McKinley gift basket, Pepperidge Farms. Click here. Pe it just sent me a Pepperidge Farms gift basket from the Chat GPT because I exposed one of its subbots. Well, I don't know. I'm going to take a moment to thank it back. Look at the weird documentation at the top of the briefing. In blue, it says, Meetings Coverage Security Council. Then underneath, 9443RD in caps, Meeting AM. <laughs> what is, first of all, is are you mean, to, bot, do you mean to say it's the 9,443rd meeting? Where's the comma after the nine? Bot, I wouldn't give a squirt up, you know what? for your ass right now. It's all run together. The RD is in caps. I mean, who, if I'm, I'm not joking. If a third grader presented uh, a mock security council briefings as part of like a elementary school project, I'm not sure this would be accepted. I'm not joking. Look on the right. SC slash 15451, 18 October. Well, you're in the United States. Isn't it the Rockefeller land that was granted to y'all asses? In the, write it October 18th. 2023. Don't write like it's the EU. This ain't the EU, dude. Guys, this is the second link in Google when one searches, what do the Palestinian people think of the attacks or do they support the attacks? You get another United Nations briefing De and it makes no sense. Delegate, be, we'll move off this. Delegates condemn Hamas terrorist attacks comma, Israeli strikes, comma, as second committee concludes debate on sovereignty, what the hell of Palestinians over their natural resources? Guys, this is bizarre. I read ahead uh, a few paragraphs and it, it doesn't even explain. I mean, obviously they're not talking about like oil and natural gas. I don't think natural resources. Is, does that, is, that, is that really coming into, does the Gaza Strip have a, a potential diamond mine uh, in the middle that could be, you know, that you could bring in a, a sort, like strip mining equipment? I mean, what are they, they're not using the bot Chat GPT, you better get on this immediately. It's not even using the term natural resources correctly. Anybody would, okay, maybe you, you might, they might, but the bot is using words literally and doesn't understand the context of how a real person would understand the term natural resources. What has it evolved into over the last 30 years? And look at the top left. How it presents, um, it's this, this release is completely different than the last one. The last one had like, the, it said whatever, the 9,400, whatever, third RD. This one says 78th session, 20th meeting. Well, so you're changing the format of how you present briefings piece by piece? I mean, what? 
Matt, there's nothing there. You're assuming that floor of the United Nations building has real people running around at desks doing briefings and stories and minutes and white papers. There ain't nothing there. You, if, you, if you were allowed access, Matt, and some robot could walk you up to that floor, you'd be crickets. Hoot, hoot. Nothing, nothing there, but just a gigantic, maybe the same supercomputer they took from war games. Just pushing out headlines with its poor English and bad grammar and horrible writing skills, pushing it out all over the world. There ain't a person to be seen on that floor. Guys, this is the last one we'll do. This is the third link of all the, what does Google tell you when you search something? 400 million things come back in 1.2 seconds. And this is the third link that comes back. Again, completely irrelevant and written by some bot that doesn't even know how to write. Look how, quote, run-on sentence and nonsense this headline is. On the unprecedented, comma, orchestrated attack by the Palestinian terrorist group Hamas against, no commas or anything, against Israel and its implications on the security situation in the OSCE area and the Mediterranean partner countries. Wait, you want to put a period after that? As deli- underneath, as delivered by Charge. I, you want to talk about a butchering, here it comes. It sh- it, you, you know what? You can't butcher a name like this. Shame on their parents for putting this on the birth certificate. Nobody should be called this. Nobody should have to pronounce it. As delivered by Char... I'm going to re- read it in the American, the South Philly Americans first. As delivered by Charge de Affaires Catherine Brucker. As delivered by Charge de Affaires Catherine Brucker. Matt, just put the uh, 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 on, the, on the end of it. Don't make it right. and Don't make it French if it's supposed to be French. Charge or whatever your name is, isn't there a legal way to change your name in the country where you're from? Who would want to go through life with that? Okay, it's as delivered by Charge to the Permanent Council Vienna, October 19. Well, where's your TH after the 1-9? What a joke. I'm never going to look at one of these briefings again. You should be ashamed of yourself, United Nations. I'm dumber and worse off for having done this video, and so are you. Blame the United Nations, not me. Thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow on Saturday.